Hello you lot. So today's is going to be a little bit different. Greetings from on top of Alan. We're going to be doing a bit of a tour around the current state of the conversion, build, renovation, whatever you, want, whatever you want to call it, and the jobs that I now need to do. And so I'm going to start up top and then we're going to head around the boat inside and then underneath to show you what I basically need to do before Alan heads off to the Arctic in the uh, early summer. Obviously there's a lot of work to do and one of the reasons why I'm doing this now is because I simply haven't had enough time over the past few days, couple of weeks, to do my normal fully edited um, with lots and lots of different cuts and, and uh, b-roll and stuff like that uh, in the style that I normally do my videos and so this one's going to be a simply continuous beginning to end almost like one of those Q&A's that we did a while ago um, but I hope that will give you a sense of what I need to get done before the early summer but also it gets me to the point where I know what I need to do um, in terms of planning and purchasing because I'm about to go to the Arctic on a ski expedition and I want to have everything ready by the time I get back uh, it's going to be a few weeks so Without further ado, here you will see I have some storage boxes. They are not very exciting, but over here, um, what we have is the more or less completed step slash uh, searchlight housing. Now that um, is now doing better in terms of condensation, but I want to do something different to the front. You can probably just about make out there the uh, the polycarbonate front, which you saw me make a few a few months ago. Now, now that's not perfect and I want to improve that. Also around this whole section, so all the way around from here to here, there is going to be a front railing and that's going to be installed right down um, the verticals um, across the bow, um, just below where that lower, lower step is. And the main braces up here are going to be there and there. And I'm going to try and do it neatly so it can actually be um, uh, having two rolls. It would also be a mount for a potential shield that's going to go in front of the uh, the cowl there from my stove. And that means that in particularly bad weather we can put some steel in front of that uh, uh, that, that H shape and protect it from extra bad conditions. Um, other than that up here what we have next these lights um, and in fact uh, the, the front camera here, they used to all be wired up, but because I wasn't very happy with my system, I actually unwired them and I need to redo that. But that's a fairly straightforward uh, operation once I simply have time to do it. Uh, all the, the, the conduit is still in place there um, and I can do that pretty quickly. This anti-slip here, it's fine when it's dry, but I noticed over the last ooh, couple of months when we've had some cold weather, the anti-slip has been all very well and good when you're maybe wearing a thick set of boots but in particular over here when you're going down towards these steps uh, it wasn't perfect and so I've actually bought some you can probably see right down the bottom um, that's not a very helpful view sorry um, right down the bottom I bought some extremely aggressive high uh, high grip um, bits of, of uh, glass fiber and I'm going to mount them in certain areas I'm also probably going to recoat this top deck in um, in much much more aggressive anti-slip but probably I'm going to turn this orange again because I think it's just going to get hot in the sun um, and there's no real point it being black to be honest with you. Uh, I am going to make some changes to the, so the solar panels. I'm actually going to shorten uh, the length of the panel so that one's going to stay and obviously its brother over there is going to stay but this one here is actually going to come off and it's going to be replaced by a one that's a a little bit shorter maybe a little bit uh, that uh, curves a little bit further around the hole there and that's because I need space in this region um, and I'll show you why in a future episode um, those of you who are absolutely terrified by the rolling performance of Alan offshore uh, will be very happy to hear that there's going to be a bilge keel system put, up, put on and although it doesn't really sound like it makes sense right now I promise you it will make sense in future once I've decided where I'm going to put in some guides here and here and then there's going to be um, a way of attaching the bilge keels underneath the boat but with the ability to take them off if so if we go into icy conditions you're then not vulnerable to, uh, to ice crush anyway that one I promise will be explained properly in the future. Right, let's carry on going backwards. This here is just currently an old bit of fiberglass I'm using to protect everything on, on underneath from, from the elements. But this, um, this mount here is gonna have a, a hinge put on and then there's going to be essentially a, a hinged hatch here that goes up and down. 
Uh, all of it will be orange, um, of course, because uh, why wouldn't it be? And that's going to be, oh, I'll just quickly show you what's underneath. I think you guys have seen this before, but um, th th there are a few more glands to put on and everything, but it's basically the main area where electrics come in and out of the boat. Um, but that needs to be neatened up. A few, uh, all of this wiring is, is now extraneous, so that's all going to come away. Um, and that will be all waterproofed and happy by the time we go. Um, what else do we have? Oh yes, obviously you remember me building the mount for the, for the, uh, for the mast. Um, that's still there, ready to go. This needs to be completed. That won't take very long. That's the mount, uh, the, the, the shoe that the, um, the, the mast actually uh, slots onto. And then that just simply needs to be bolted there and there. And then obviously on the side of the, the mast itself. Um, the mast is going to have a number of things mounted on it. Um, the AIS antenna, are, uh, uh, there's going to be a GPS, there'll be, need to be some lighting um, and also a wind generator. So that's a job that I need to do relatively soon. Um, I also need to complete all of these polycarbonates uh, window surrounds. I know I did the one at the stern, which I did a whole, a whole episode on, in fact, two episodes. This one here, um, as you can see, I've not, uh, I've not sanded back the, um, uh, the sealant and, uh, and, and painted the whole thing in yet because I was getting a bit of a condensation issue there. And so I've not actually, until I've resolved that, I've not gone ahead and gone and completed the one here because obviously the, uh, the main driver's view is the most important one. All right, let's head down into the insides of Alan. You can see here, there's another camera and there's obviously more lighting. There's one all over the place and then that's going to be run all the cabling back into the boat. And uh, that's where I can observe things from. Okay, we're inside. Let me take off my sunglasses so I can actually see what I'm talking about. Uh, you can see that we're still very much in, in workshop mode here. Um, those of you who've seen my specials when we went uh, onto the Medway, out, out into the uh, Thames estuary, and then also up the Thames, will have really enjoyed the fact that all of this stuff is just gone from inside when we're, at, when, when we're on the water, and it just makes the whole place seem so much more spacious. But at the moment, this is obviously a workshop, uh, and it's, I'm, I'm storing you know endless stuff, uh, resins, cleaning stuff, endless boxes of components, um, things that I need when I'm just living on here, because I'm, I'm off the here overnight. So yeah, uh, I, I tend to sort of subdivide different areas of the workshop into different sorts of zones. Um, uh, this is stuff, stuff that tends to either cut things or grab things. Um, this is actually things that need to be essentially uh, stored and organized. Um, and then this is obviously not what the final use of these, uh, these net storage uh, areas are going to be, but uh, they're, they're fine for now. So jobs for inside here. We'll start from the stern, shall we? Um, we finally ended up on a plan for the engine bay extraction using one of these, uh, these, these blower fans. So that just needs to be uh, fitted into uh, a boxed in unit here, um, which will have the air from the engine bay going in this direction. And then it'll head up and out of, the, of this port. And that'll be, uh, that'll be very smart. This is all. This is all obviously all normally boxed in when the engine cowl is on, um, and so that is the rear section of the engine bay, and it's where any fumes or nasty, uh, nasty smells or anything will be will be carried out of the boat. Um, I'm as yet unsure about auto helm. Some of it is going to be down to budget. Some of it's going to be down to practicality of installation. But essentially, because we have quite a straightforward steering system here with a, with a big tiller mount there, it would be quite easy to install an auto helm. So maybe some of you with some experience of that can, uh, can, set, can share some ideas with me. Um, we will see. Uh, the exhaust appears to be, well, the exhaust is still here, so that's good news. Um, I have, you'll be delighted to know, uh, put this the right way around, uh, the right way around now. And otherwise, the engine is pretty much good to go. I've been checking for any coolant leaks over the previous weeks. There was one tiny one about a month ago, but I've tightened up the hoses, and that now seems to be uh, completely... Uh, I don't think the term coolant tight is the right word, but you know what I mean. Um, what, have, what have we got here? Okay. Um, oh, this is, well, at the moment, just where I'm putting a load of uh, electrics, but this is obviously uh, the heads, and you'll remember that from way back in the day in my early episodes when I installed that. 
there is going to be um, what would you call it a modesty section installed and so probably around here I'm going to put in a mount here and so there'll be some kind of a loop ring around there so we can have uh, a curtain that can be very easily uh, removed but also then if it's in use by someone who is uh, in, requ in, in need of some privacy they can uh, then they can crack on and do their thing in uh, uh, without being uh, observed by all and sundry. What else do we have here? We have um, uh, those magnetic uh, blackout and um, uh, secondary glazing um, and also so this magnetic strip means that both of the two panels whether it's a secondary glazing or the blacking out uh, can be popped on and off really easily and obviously the panels are so thin they can be stored away uh, very easily. This area is currently empty. Um, I suspect it's going to be where I'm going to mount the fan uh, that, that will accept or will rather draw in air from here. You can see that running all the way along the boat there is a, a, there's a ventilation box there and that's really for um, either bringing air out or bringing air into the cabin. So this is going to, this hose will come across here. There'll be a, uh, a nice, hopefully quiet fan here which will then drive air either in or out of this stainless steel port. Uh, driving console is looking pretty good. Um, there's something actually down here which will end up up there in the end. Let me grab it. Here it is. Um, this is actually a removable Velcro uh, red light and that's going to be mounted up at the top so that, we, um, so that the um, whoever's navigating or, or helming uh, Alan will be able to uh, uh, use red light and not damage their night vision and um, that needs to go in at some point soon. Um, the electrics panel is looking much 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 neater than it used to because I've sort of consolidated a lot of particularly a lot of the negative um, wire runs because I realized I didn't need lots of parallel uh, negative wires. And anyway, that's looking a lot better. I've also installed some, uh, you probably won't be able to see that well on this camera and I'll do a proper episode on it, but I put in some much nicer uh, grommets here um, to allow the silicon wires to pass through the board without the chance of them getting abraded or, 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 or damaged because that would be a, an absolute disaster. Uh, over here we have more storage, more storage, more storage. My whiteboard, which you'll all be enormous fans of now. Um, front of the panel. Um, oh, this is quite exciting. This is going to be a future episode. This is one of Alan's two new cranking batteries. This is a lithium iron phosphate. Uh, it's very small. It will crank Alan 15 times um, and it's going to be mounted down here. Uh, but there'll be a whole episode later on explaining why I'm doing that as opposed to relying on the actual main bank of batteries down here, which are the actual, um, uh, well, there's going to be four down here. At the moment, there's three. So it's going to be um, 24 volts, uh, two sets in parallel. What do we have over here? Um, we have, well, this is kind of just where my, my, my heater and my, uh, my little fridge is at the moment. And that's, of course, just going to end up being storage later on. Uh, the solar charging jack is down there. I'm swapping out these Andersons, which I'm not very happy with, for more Deutsch connectors. Those of you who introduced me to Deutsch connectors, i.e. these, are going to be absolutely delighted because I really like them and I'm starting to put them all in all sorts of different places. I'm just adding more work for myself, but I think it will be worth it. Um, this is where all the solar um, uh, power enters the enters the uh, the battery box, but uh, again, I'll go into more detail about that later on. Before I go further, Sternwood, I thought I'd show you this. I've, I've obviously shown you that I've got my AIS and my uh, uh, my, my my proper radio here. Uh, very kindly, uh, the result of some of uh, you you guys getting involved and in trying to make sure I have all the, all the best equipment. And it's not wired in yet. Uh, it's all mounted, as you can see, but I've not finished the junction boxes. Lots of episodes are ready. Uh, are, well, not ready, they're on their way to being uh, uploaded and, and on YouTube. The problem being is that they've all got something missing, particularly towards the end, uh, often because things simply haven't arrived in the post or they, they were the wrong item. And that means that I'm just kind of holding fire on a lot of them because otherwise there's lots of, lots of unfinished stories. Anyhow, great radio. Um, the cables, um, the antennas will then head up and out of the boat and up onto the mast. Right, heading back, we have our clock and our hygrometer and uh, barometer and all sorts of different things there. Um, there was a, oh, this is, I, I don't find many problems on this boat because as you know, the quality of workmanship on board is absolutely beyond, uh, beyond all doubt or any reproach. But something down here in one of these storage 
uh, zones. This is, of course, used to, this used to be in uh, foam insulation. Uh, there was a bit of damp in the corner, which is shocking. And there was even a little bit of mold going on. So I've emptied it out. I've dried, uh, dried it up by keeping this open, put some anti-mold anti spray in and letting the whole thing sort of recover. And then I will find out what the source of that leak was. Bit confused about that, possibly something going on over here. And then uh, the whole thing will be reprimed and painted and hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll be okay. But I've got to find the source of that leak. and I think I know where it might be. We've done very well with leaks in the past. So um, there's not a great deal going on in, the, in this middle racking section. It's just storage, as you can see. Um, Alan's brain, which I think you may have seen in the, uh, the, the, com the community section of my channel, um, where I just post pictures and stuff. Um, where is the brain? Oh, here it is. Here is Alan's brain. This is a bit of a fast forward to a future episode. This is a little computer, in case you're confused by that. Uh, that's going to be mounted actually up top here because I want to keep in this part of the boat, I want to keep all the power high up because it's a lesson I've learned from factories that I've that, that I visited. It's a really good, safe way of, of storing, of, of, of keeping power high up as opposed to down here where you might end up with all sorts of disaster and dampness and flood and this, that and the other. So anyhow, there's going to be power running across here, powering the computer. And that means that we can run screens over here. Um, we can plug in all the USB bits and bobs that need to go to the navigation and to cameras and everything. So that's going to be really exciting when we sort of electrify Alan. Um, right, what is next? What would make sense for me to talk to you about next? This is um, the battery box uh, uh, lid, which you've seen me make in a previous episode. This, of course, is <laughs> the tripod, which is the main reason why so many of my videos are wondrously uh, still, steady and smooth. So you can thank the tripod for that. Got it years ago, absolutely love it. Um, endless spray cans, polyester resin. Um, ooh, something hiding there. This was a, a kind of like a Christmas present. You can see down here, the walkways are looking pretty damn tired. Uh, they're of course the original gel coats from the, the initial molding and just endless work and you know bashing around scraping things around they're, they're, they're looking pretty pretty manky and there's not much you can do about them apart from give them a coating so i've got some extremely high quality uh, factory floor waterproof epoxy uh, resin floor paint essentially and that's going to coat the lower sections all the way down here but of course i'll do that quite late on because there's no point doing that then re-damaging them again before i finish most of the work that's gonna be quite exciting i'm also going to replace um you can see down here this is all looking very temporary this is a bit of a bodge that we had to do with the fuel line for the uh for the london trip uh all this is going to be um re um uh, rehosed it looks like a bigger job than it really is. Um, it's just a case of replacing a few lines and then mounting them on, on, on proper clips. And the, all, this, uh, um, all this foam down here, which is keeping the fuel tank at, a, at an angle, which allows all the fuel to travel down this end to where the, uh, to where the collection pipe is. Uh, that needs to be, for, the best, for better use of words, formalized. Um, the, the principle works, I, I like it, and so I'm going to fit in uh, a slight slope at that angle um, with a with a foam padding on top to, uh, for the fuel tank to sit on, and then that means that that can be then strapped down um, and probably locked at both ends with anchors so that the fuel tank is secure. That's the main day tank. Um, it's not a lot to show you around that way, apart from the fact, well, there's the fuel tank, which I'm just kind of keeping there. It's quite big and bulbous, so I just try to put it out of the way. Um, coming around here, right, this is where I've had lots and lots of holdups recently. Um, of course, the stove, the fuel tank, which has finally arrived, that's the replacement one which I, which I wanted. Uh, we've got a filter here, um, a pump, that's going to be for the... Um, uh, for the uh, fresh water drinking system here, which is, that's all installed. That tank obviously needs to go down there and then I can start installing um, the carbon filter, the, um, all, the, all the piping. There's lots and lots of step up and step down uh, adapters because everything seems to be at a different diameter. And then of course the hand pump because I want to keep electrics away from this, uh, from this uh, fresh water drinking zone. There's no point putting electrics running to absolutely everywhere. Uh, I've had to have this recut about three times, um, mostly my fault, 
um, but that's going to be the thing that uh, helps neaten up the, um, the flue exit. I've also got a reducer I need that can all be installed soon. And so this will start looking excellent uh, in, in very, very short order. The flue damper, which is gonna be mounted over here, unfortunately is still in Vancouver. I'm actually gonna physically go to Vancouver in a few days to go and get it, not just for that purpose, but I'm gonna be in Vancouver anyhow. So that's gonna happen. And that's why this isn't up already. But you can also see that I've actually started routing the, uh, the fuel hose down around here, which is then gonna to run to one, uh, this hose tail. So um, the fuel delivery for the reflex stove is not too far away. Um, and hopefully that's not too ominous, but that's a very sensible place to have a fire blanket, I believe. Right, um, what else can I talk to you about? Down here, there's still quite a pile underneath here of all of that steel ballast. I have some places where that's gonna go because I want to make sure I use up all of my, my ballast steel to weigh down the lower, the lower parts of um, Allen as well as I can. There's also some areas where I can get some lead. I, I was actually gifted some lead a few months ago and down below there, there's actually a void and I'm gonna probably stuff as much lead as I can down there and then fill it with some kind of setting, sort of concrete style stuff so that it all, so it's all sort of locked in down there. Um, the anchor system, it, it works fine. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll probably box it in more neatly here so that we don't have, well, an anchor sticking out into the cabin. But this system with the anchor worked quite nicely last time, so I'm pretty happy with that. This is where, some of this is gonna have to come out because that's where the brackets for that, for that uh, rear railing, sorry, not rear railing, bow railing, is going to come through and, and bolt through the, uh, the surface. So um, uh, that's gonna have to, cosmetically at least, be compromised soon. Uh, I think that's pretty much all I can show you at this end of the boat. This is obviously the big story at the moment. Stove, fresh water, um, and I know that I've left you slightly in the lurch with that, but it wasn't my fault that this hadn't arrived, that hadn't arrived, that was the wrong diameter, everything was wrong. And so, anyway, that will be solved. What we're gonna do now is head out to the boat and I'm just gonna give you a quick zoom around the outside of Allen, and we'll call it a day. And it's nice and sunny outside, so we'll enjoy that. Uh, this is where I think we might have had the source of that leak. The rest of the, um, the rest, uh, the rest of this, I guess you would say, like the sort of uh, the fender that goes all the way around Allen, is, is actually in really good nick. I guess it's PVC, and it seems absolutely fine. Um, but here, because of the way that these steps are designed, you tend to get water dripping down here. So the water sort of collects in one in one little waterfall, and you can see it's. Uh, it's all a bit grim in there. I, I actually epoxy coated it uh, when I epoxy coated the actual lower hull, but something's not right there. So what I might do is just cut this section away and see if I can make some kind of a, uh, a deflector so that the water doesn't collect around here. Then I will probably dry out and reseal this whole area so that nothing can get through. It may well be that one of these bolts isn't properly sealed and water is just very, very slowly seeping through. And that would be very sad if that was to continue. Um, oh, the actual hull itself, <laughs> this is going to be a big job on the, uh, on the list. Uh, well, this is simply epoxy primer. This needs to be done. So I'm probably going to copper coat. Uh, I've got a quote from copper coat. And as you know, copper coating is outrageously expensive. But I think it's probably for Alan's sort of use going to be the most cost effective long term solution to anti fouling. Um, and it's also environmentally the least, um, the least unpleasant, let's say. Uh, so it might be an investment I will simply have to make. Um, apart from that, and so I know it looks really messy, but uh, there are still some areas which haven't been primed, but that's because that's where that rest used to be. And I've just not got around to doing um, uh, little bits and bobs of patching up until I'm ready to do the main job. Uh, I know it doesn't look pretty. Um, okay, the bow of Allen. I've pretty much talked about what's gonna happen at the bow from the inside, but you can see where I'm gonna bolt on the brackets here and then on the other side and then that's going to be where the verticals for the uh, for the railings go um, got some bits and bobs here so this is if you remember dick very very kindly a uh, very, very good friend of alan uh, dick gave me uh, this grp uh, grating and that's going to be the rear standing platform uh, we'll get round to the rear um, uh, the, the stern in, in a second this is some very thick 
uh, fiberglass which is going to uh, reinforce the transom and that's some of the uh, super aggressive uh, anti-slip which is going to go up top uh, otherwise that's actually all I need to really say at the bow we'll go around to the stern now and have a look, quick look at what's going around there aside from stuff I need to take to the recycling place um, this is where I'm actually going to reinforce this transom um, I need to be able to mount quite a lot on there and so I'm going to reinforce that with another centimetre and a bit of fibreglass, uh, both bonded and bolted on. Uh, I'm probably going to completely remove this, which isn't needed anymore, and I'm going to add an anti... Um, I'm sure there's a word for, for this, which, now, which currently escapes me, but to stop a wave essentially forcing water even around this protector here into the exhaust pipe, um, I'm going to mount a a shawl over the uh, over it so that um, wave action can't damage it or get water forced in um, down here i've been working very very hard with people who actually know what they're talking about on protecting that prop and also just this general section from uh, from ice whether coming from this direction or from that direction because obviously alan will be sometimes be going astern and i think there were loads of options where we could have actually built this entire section out and completely change the shape of the hull and I might have that temporarily for if we're actually going to be hauled out on top of ice but I think ultimately I'm just going to go for a very strong stainless mesh over both here and here completely covering the entrance and exit to this um, to this prop protector and that will stop large chunks of ice getting caught in there and possibly damaging either the propeller shaft or the propeller itself zooming around here right this will this will test your memories so a while ago I was, um, let me go around here, whoops. A while ago I actually was um, grinding away and then resealing some areas where there used to be some drain valves in the bottom of the hull and I've actually not finished that because I was planning to do it when I was under the boat doing uh, the protector for the keel cooler, uh, but that will now will have to happen probably April time and it's just another job which I should really have got done earlier but have not. The keel cooler itself is staying put. I was considering having it replaced but it is going to stay with us. Um, oops, just bang the camera. But I am going to make a serious reinforced uh, fiberglass protector shield that goes around it and that will still allow lots of water flow over it because obviously water needs to pass over the metal to allow the heat to dissipate. Um, but that will then mean that it can take glancing blows from uh, from any lumps of ice that are pushed underneath the hull. Right, let's come out here. Um, I mean, strangely enough, the starboard side is kind of like the port side, but the mirror image, there's not really much more to say around here. And with that, I'm going to wish you an exceptionally good uh, end of your winter and start of your spring. I'm going to go get cold in Alaska and... I will see you all for lots of episodes when I'm back. And as you can probably tell, it's going to be a thick and fast flurry of activity once I'm back in the UK. Enjoy the sun. Bye.